Hello and welcome. My name is Tahir, and in today's video, we will be showing you how to set up an Amcrest IP security system from start to finish. And although this particular video pertains to Amcrest branded IP cameras and NVR specifically, the principles outlined in this video will be generally applicable to a wide variety of IP camera security systems. Now here at Amcrest, we're always posting new content to inform you of the latest tech, tips, tricks, and other security-related topics. So if you like this video and you want to see more of this type of content, please consider liking and subscribing as it really helps us out and allows this video to reach a much wider audience. The security system we're going to set up is an NVR, or Network Video Recorder, along with some IP cameras. We will be using the latest in Amcrest AI NVR technology, the NV4208E-AI, as well as some of our top-selling cameras that we offer, including the IP8M T2669E and the IP8M 2696E. When setting up an IP security system, it's always better to make sure your NVR and cameras are the same brands. Some third-party options may still work together using protocols such as ONVIF. However, it will be much easier to troubleshoot any problems you have if they are from the same brand. On the back of the NVR, you will see it has a built-in PoE switch. This allows PoE IP cameras to be plugged in directly to the back of the NVR using an Ethernet cable. This particular model has eight ports, which means it can supply power and data for each PoE device connected to it per port. Most of our NVRs have integrated PoE switches built in. However, not all of them do. If your NVR does not have these integrated ports, then an external PoE switch can be used to provide power and data from the network. Next, we have a 1080p monitor, which can be connected to the back of your NVR to view your device using the provided HDMI or VGA connections on the back of the NVR. Now, if you are using the NVR for local storage, then a hard drive will need to be installed prior to setting up. And unless your NVR already comes with a hard drive pre-installed, it will need to be purchased separately. Amcrest NVRs are compatible with most Western Digital or Seagate branded hard drives. However, for a more detailed list of compatible hard drives, a list can be found on our knowledge base, which can be found in the description below. To connect a hard drive, use a Phillips head screwdriver to remove the top casing of the NVR. Locate the power and data connectors on the motherboard and connect the SATA and power cables to the connection. Connect the other end of the cables to the hard drive and secure the hard drive to the bottom casing using the included hard drive screws included in the box. Place and secure the top cover back onto the NVR. In terms of cabling, we're primarily going to need Ethernet cables. Most Amcrest NVRs come with an Ethernet cable included in the box already. However, some additional Ethernet cabling will need to be purchased separately. We will also need a cable for connecting our NVR to our monitor. This could be either a HDMI or VGA. We recommend HDMI as it will provide a better picture overall when compared to VGA. And lastly, in terms of equipment, we will need an internet router or switch. Now, technically, this is not required, as you can still set your system up without an internet connection. But if you want to be able to access your system remotely, it will need to be connected to the internet. So let's continue onwards and begin setting up our NVR. The first thing we're going to do is set up our NVR. Plug the power cord to the back of the NVR. Next, connect the Ethernet cable to the Ethernet port on the back of the NVR. And lastly, the HDMI cable will go into the HDMI port and to the monitor. If the NVR has a power switch, please make sure the power switch is flipped up to turn on the NVR and allow it to initialize. To interact with your monitor, a USB mouse is included with the NVR. However, any USB mouse can work to navigate the interface. Now, with the NVR turned on, let's take a look at the monitor. First, it's going to bring you to a device initialization screen as well as a startup wizard and the registration menu. Verify the region, language, and video standard are correct, and click Next to continue. Verify the time zone and system time are correct, and click Next to continue. The system will prompt you to add a password. This will be the password used to log into your NVR to access the local or remote interface. A password length should be between 8 and 12 characters, and include at least two types of special characters. A prompt question can also be used for password recovery. After this information has been in entered, click Next to continue. Use your mouse to draw an unlock pattern. 
This is not essential and can be skipped. However, this pattern can be used as a more convenient means of accessing your system. The password protection screen allows you to set an email for password recovery purposes, as well as set security questions. Here we verify the information for each menu until you reach the registration screen. This will be the interface in which you register your network cameras. However, since these are not connected to the network, we can skip this for now. After this is complete, you will be taken to the main screen. This is where you can view any connection on the NVR. However, before we continue, we're going to adjust our network settings. Right-click on the main screen and click on Main Menu. In the Management section, click on Network. In the TCP IP tab, click on the pencil icon under Edit and locate where it says DHCP. You'll notice this is enabled, indicating that the router has assigned this device a dedicated IP. This is great because this is what we want. However, we want to make sure this IP stays static within the system to avoid any IP conflicts during future use. To do this, locate the DHCP toggle switch and disable it. You'll notice the IP is now static. Please write this IP address down and keep it handy in case we ever need to log into our NVR from a computer connected to the same network. And we can edit all these additional settings from a web browser. Click Save to set the NVR's IP to static. Click Apply on the TCP IP menu to confirm the setting has been properly saved. So to sum up, log into your NVR, open network settings, disable DHCP to set the NVR to static, and write down the static IP address, and keep it handy in every case you need to log in from a web browser. Now that is out of the way, let's go ahead and get our cameras installed on this NVR. But before we continue, let's go ahead and discuss what an IP camera actually is. You see, unlike an analog camera, which takes raw video data and sends it to a DVR, an IP camera does all of that processing inside the camera itself, which means as soon as this camera is connected to power, it's ready to go and start streaming video immediately. And the way we access that video is through the network. If we have a device on the same network, like let's say an NVR, then we will be able to access the camera, all of its feeds, manage all of the settings, and the recorded footage. The great thing about Amcrest PoE cameras is that both power and data are supplied through one Ethernet cable. So if we take an Ethernet cable and plug it into the Ethernet port on the camera and the other into a PoE switch, the camera will be connected to both power and to the network. This particular NVR has an integrated PoE switch on the back. However, if your NVR does not have a PoE switch, an external PoE switch can be used to power and provide data to the camera. When you connect the IP camera to the back of the NVR with an Ethernet cable, the power from the NVR is going to power the camera and place this camera on a segregated network provided by the NVR. So any device connected to these ports are going to be on the same network. Since our cameras and the NVR are both the same brand, they're going to be able to communicate seamlessly, and the NVR is going to pull that camera feed in right away. By default, this NVR is going to be looking for AMCAST cameras that are connected to the NVR's segregated network. So once it finds one, it's going to automatically connect and pull everything in. However, please be aware that the camera's password cannot be the default password, such as admin. It will have to be updated in the camera registration menu on the NVR. To access the camera registration page, right-click on the main screen and access the main menu. Click on Camera. The camera registration page will be in the Remote Device menu. Click on the Edit icon and update the camera's password. Once the status of the camera shows green, it is properly registered to the NVR. You can connect the additional cameras to the NVR and repeat the process to connect the additional cameras to the system. Now at this point, the NVR is the only thing connected to your network. The cameras are on their own separate network managed by the NVR. Now this can be beneficial because all the bandwidth used by your cameras to send data to your NVR is going to be confined to this separate network. It's not going to interfere with any of your computers, your laptops, phones, or anything else you have connected to your network. However, the drawback of this type of system is that now in order to access your cameras, you will have to always go through your NVR. And that could just make things like troubleshooting any individual problems with a certain camera a bit of a pain. But I think if this is your first security system, 
that the benefits far outweigh the drawbacks here because this is just a much easier way to get up and running with your security cameras. So if you do have a PoE switch in the back of your NVR, we highly recommend using this option when first setting up. But there might be a few reasons that you do need an external PoE switch. For instance, as previously discussed, maybe your NVR doesn't have a PoE switch in the back. Or maybe you need to install a security camera that are more than 300 feet away from your NVR. You see, at about 300 feet, your PoE cable is going to start running into issues uh, unless you have a PoE extender, a PoE switch with extend mode, or you'll probably just have to install a PoE switch closer to your installation site. Now, you can also set your cameras up with a PoE switch if you don't even have an NVR, and maybe if you're planning to just use the cameras by themselves. However, keep in mind that if you are doing this, then in order to record footage, you'll need a micro SD card rather than a hard drive. And lastly, some people prefer the control of having the security cameras on their main network so they can manage them individually without having to go through the NVR at all. So if you're going to be using an external PoE switch for your security system, here's how to do it. First, let's ensure the PoE switch you're using is connected to power and connected to your main network using an Ethernet cable. The main network cable will go into an uplink port on the switch. Once this is done, connect an Ethernet cable from the Ethernet port on the back of the NVR to an available port on the switch. Connect each PoE camera to the switch, ensuring the green and yellow LEDs are blinking. The green LED indicates the device is receiving power, and the yellow light means they are getting internet activity. Once the cameras have been successfully connected, you will see that nothing is currently connected to your NVR. Even though the NVR is connected to the main network and your cameras are connected to the main network, they aren't automatically communicating to each other yet. So we have to go and locate the cameras on the network and add them to the NVR. This process is performed in the camera registration menu of the NVR. Most security cameras will have DHCP enabled by default, which means that the camera is going to rely on the internet router to give it an IP address. Now this is good because we know that these IP addresses are both compatible with the network and unique to the camera. However, since it is set to DHCP, this means that the IP address can change at any time. Now that's not good because the IP address is the only way the NVR is going to know where to look for those cameras. So before adding the cameras to the NVR, we recommend setting it first with a static IP address by disabling DHCP. To register the camera from the network to the NVR, right click on the main screen and access the main menu. Click on the camera option under management to access the camera registration tab under remote devices. Click on device search. This will allow the NVR to automatically search the network for the connected IP cameras. Select the IP cameras you would like to add and click the add button to add them to the NVR. If the status of the cameras remains red, click the refresh button to refresh the interface. If the status remains red, this indicates the cameras are not properly registered. The right main reason for this uh, issue is usually password conflicts between the NVR and the camera. By default, the camera will come with a default password of admin. However, if this has been changed, you will need to update that in the NVR as well. This can be changed by updating the password of the camera inside the NVR. To update the password, click the pencil icon in the Edit menu. Enter the password for the camera inside the password field and click Apply to save. If the status does not immediately change to green, that's OK. Just click the Refresh button, and the status will change from red to green, indicating the camera has been properly added to the NVR. The cameras can now be viewed on the live view screen of your NVR. Now let's go over some pros and cons of this type of setup. The first obvious pro is that now you can access each of your cameras individually through the web UI in the web browser, rather than having to go through the NVR. Now this will give you a little bit more fine control over your security system and make troubleshooting a lot easier. But the downside is now that each of your cameras on the main network, they're going to be sharing the bandwidth and may interfere with some of your other devices. Now this may not be an issue initially, but as you add more and more cameras to your system, it could start to become an issue. Another thing to consider with this type of setup is that the NVR is now completely dependent on network connectivity in order to record from the cameras. This means that if anything were to happen to your internet for any reason, the NVRs would not be able to see the cameras anymore, which means no more recordings. However, if the cameras were connected directly to the NVR using the built-in PoE switch, the NVR would not need internet in order to see the cameras because the NVR would be the one providing power and data to the cameras. Now that we have our NVR and camera set up, 
let's move on to recording footage. You see, by themselves, IB cameras stream video, but only in real time. There's no way to go back and see footage from the past unless we have some sort of local storage option, such as a hard drive. Some of our NVRs come with either single or multiple hard drive bays. However, hard drives may need to be purchased separately unless they're provided in a kit or other package that we sell. Now, we previously covered hard drive installation. However, it's important to note that without a hard drive, you will not be able to view or store recordings locally. By default, the NVR will be set to record 24-7 continuous recording. That includes motion as well as uh, IVS recording types. However, a schedule can be created if needed to customize your specific recording times. For instance, if you would like motion recording to only be activated at a certain time of day, you can use your mouse to adjust the recording time based on your needs and click Save to save the schedule. Once you've recorded some footage, you can now access the playback menu to view any recordings you've saved to your hard drive. This is great because it means you physically have access to all of the surveillance footage and have complete control over what you do with it. Now, one last thing we should talk about is getting this device set up for remote access. That way you can view your security cameras from anywhere in the world. Most IP systems in the market today use P2P or peer-to-peer, -peer, which is basically a third party that sits between your recorder and an external device on another network in order to facilitate communication outside of a local network. This prevents you from having to do any kind of port forwarding or anything like that to access your device remotely. By default, P2P will be enabled. To access P2P details, navigate to the network menu on your device and click on the P2P tab. This will show the status of the P2P service, as well as a scannable QR code, which you can use to add your device to the Amcrest View Pro app. The Amcrest View Pro app allows you to view and access your device from your mobile phone. To add the NVR to the app, download and install the Amcrest View Pro app from the App or Play Store. Once installed, tap the plus icon and select DVR NVR to add your device via P2P to the app. Scan the QR code in the P2P menu of the NVR and follow the in-app instructions to add the NVR to the app. From this point on, you'll be able to access the NVR from any, anywhere in the world, as long as you're connected to the internet and as long as the recorder is connected to the internet. If you're using other methods, such as an IP address or IP domain, you can type the IP address into your phone, but you'll only be able to access the device when you're connected to the same network. That's because your phone will be looking for the NVR at its specific IP address. And if it's not on the same local network, it's not going to be able to find it. That's why P2P is actually critical if you're trying to access your device remotely. Now that we have all this set up, the system is ready to go. Now there's a lot happening here, but at the end of the day, all it really takes is connecting a few devices together and letting them do what they were designed to do. For the most part, these systems are designed to do all the hard work for you, and these cameras are pretty much ready to go out of the box. However, if you still have some unanswered questions, please feel free to give us a call or send us an email uh, or leave a comment below. We're always happy to help you guys out. I hope this video was helpful for you. I hope you learned a thing or two. And again, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us across social media because we post content just like this all the time. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. We'll see you next time.